Counselor Accents Podcast. Two school counselors who love their jobs. Oh, and they happen to have Southern accents too. Bless their hearts. I'm Laura Rancorn. And I'm Kim Crumbly. And together we are Counselor Accents. And we have a fellow Southerner with us. Kim, I am thrilled to have back with us Dr. Russ Sabella. As you know, we have deemed him the contemporary father of school counseling. And I believe that that title is catching on. So you're welcome for that. And like any good father, he is telling us how to go out and get a summer job. <laughs> to talk about his book, School Counselor Side Hustle. Oh, well, gosh, thank you, guys. It's such a pleasure to be with you. It's always so much fun, and you're so inspirational. Thank you for all you guys do for kids and the profession. I'm, I'm really humbled. Thank you. Oh, you know what? I was thinking, I believe that you are our only returning guest ever. So I don't know what that says about you. I don't know what that says about us, but... I think it says we're stalkers, and I had to make Laura... It's like the next week. She's like, well, I'm calling... Um, Russ, like she can call you Russ. Hey, well, of course you can. Thank you for that. And I'm like, you're going to have to give him a little break, but um, we are. This book, we didn't really talk about this, so I feel like it's okay to bother you again. <laughs> oh, no bother. Oh, my gosh, you guys. This, this is, is something separate. This is something different. And um, so, yes, Laura and I have a side hustle. We do this podcast. And uh, so... It's near and dear to our hearts, and we get a lot of questions about it. So uh, talk to us a little bit about this, how this came about, and uh, maybe maybe you want to start off with what you're doing now, because I don't um, know if everybody heard the last podcast. Talk to us a little bit about what you're doing now. Well, um, right now, I've got two uh, recent books out, School Counselor Side Hustle and the Solution Focused School Counseling. They're both doing really well. I'm actually uh, working with a lot of universities to help them adopt the, the, the books for, yeah, there it is, uh, for courses. Um, and, um, and, and actually, uh, if you must know, let's see, I've got, a, uh, I've got a textbook that I'm working on as well. And this is actually one that's, actually, the first edition is the one that I used when I was a graduate student. It's uh, Dr. Myrick's Developmental uh, Guidance and Counseling book. Uh, currently, it's in its fifth edition, and I was uh, uh, Bob has been a really great mentor and friend over the years, and uh, he and I decided that uh, we were going to keep it going. There's some great stuff in that book that you can't find anywhere else. So, currently, I'm working uh, with him on the sixth edition uh, of that honor. textbook. Yeah, and of course, you know, Dr. Myrick is kind of known as one of the the three gurus, uh, along with Curly Johnson and Norm Geisbers, and so. Uh, I've really enjoyed it, uh, just uh, really looking at all of the progress that the profession has made in the last 10 years, and it's been fun kind of updating and inserting all the different new things that have been happening, and I started to realize just how much has happened in the last 10 years. If I knew and it was I want to go ahead and... Yeah. I, I would love... It, if go it, ahead. If I knew it was going to be that much work, I'd uh, give it a second thought. I mean, there's a lot to yeah. talk about. <laughs> So I can see in the future because you have piqued my interest and I'm like, well, there's another podcast because uh, I think I'm always interested in how far we've come and the history and, and, and uh, some things that you want to keep that are so important. And uh, I think sometimes we just cycle things that come and go, but what are those foundational things that we want to keep forever? So I'm excited. Maybe we could get you guys, you or whoever. I don't want to say that they would come on because that would be an honor, but to have you back and talking about that with our school counselors one day. So Laura, you're welcome. If, I, if I'm begging right now for him to come on later <laughs> and discuss how far oh. we've come in the history, just looking at what your work on this fifth edition, that'd be great. Oh, well, thank you. You're reminding me of a saying that my Southern and mother-in-law always used to say, and that the, the, uh, the latch key is on the outside, I think she used to say, or the, what is she used to say? Something like that. Yeah. Open door. Yes. <laughs> Love it. Yep. Yep. Okay. So let's delve into this side hustle. Talk to, talk to how, how did this come about? Yeah, you know, you actually said it, and you guys have similar experiences. Uh, you get a lot of questions about doing a side hustle. 
And uh, I've uh, been able to develop my own side hustle, uh, professional development and resource development, consultation, that kind of stuff, uh, really for about the last 25 plus years. Um, but it was really in the last five years that, like you guys, uh, I noticed a lot of school counselors uh, really reaching out to me, emails and calls and wanting to get some advice. They wanted to really supplement their incomes. And so uh, it really... It really uh, struck me that this was something of a need. Um, and, and unfortunately, you know, I get it that uh, school counselors are underpaid. You know, we shouldn't have to worry about a side hustle. Um, however, the reality is, is that uh, we have lots of great talents and skills that are valuable. And so uh, what, I, what I really wanted to get through in this book is that if you must, if you must do a side hustle, um, rather than going out and Ubering or doing those other kinds of non-counseling things, which are all great side hustles. A lot of school counselors we discovered enjoy those things. Um, however, you don't have to. Uh, you can monetize a lot of what you do beyond the classroom. And that was kind of the gist of it, uh, to really do more of what you are already doing, what you love to do, and supplement your income. Now, um, what we realized, and what I realized over the years, but as we talked to a lot of school counseling side hustlers, is that uh, you know having extra paychecks is really one benefit, and that's a big one. Uh, uh, for me, it's a, it's a lifestyle issue, it's a freedom issue, and if you have kids, you know this is this is an easier way to get through college or post secondary uh, jobs and that kind of kind of getting them set up. Uh, it also made the difference between, you know, going to the park and going to Disney World sometimes. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, it really gives you a lot of peace and freedom. And, and for me, too, one of the things that I really like to encourage uh, everyone to do is to invest in your retirement and augment your savings. And so I think, you know, financial uh, peace is life peace. And so that's a big perk. Um, but here's what. Here's the other thing. We found out from a lot of school counseling side hustlers that that's just one of the perks, uh, that when it is you engage in a side hustle, uh, because it takes some extra time, this is not a side shuffle, this is a hustle. And, and so uh, you become better time managers, that uh, the people that we talked to really started to find hours in their day that they probably didn't even know they had. Um, I think another really, really big perk and all of this is it just sharpens your skills. Every single side hustler we talked to said it made them better counselors during the day uh, because the market doesn't lie. If you put something out there and nobody's buying it or nobody's paying attention to it, you know that that's, uh, it doesn't have as much value as perhaps you thought. So, so the market really kind of drove value and it really helped people. And, and by the way, the skills in just doing the side hustle, staying organized and focused, and uh, really making use of your calendar and really paying attention to what school counselors need uh, to make their lives easier uh, really made people better uh, school counselors. And I think um, for a lot of people we talked to, it was a confidence builder. Uh, so, uh, you know, that, that together to me was, was a big deal. Um, so, uh, you know, I've seen, I'm getting all these emails over the last five years and um, I was, I was able Stephanie Lerner, one of uh, our, my co-author here, who's an amazing school counselor. She's now a su district level supervisor or consultant in Texas. Um, it was probably about four years ago when she reached out, I was going to Texas to do a, a keynote or something. And so we sat down for some coffee and she was, uh, she'd already been an author. She was already doing some things. And, uh, as her and I talked about this. Uh, it just struck me that it was time. It was time that, to put this resource out there, that there was a need and there was really no resource. There's a lot of side hustling websites and business oriented things, but there's nothing for school counselors. So we put our heads together and we started looking around. And for about a year, we started collecting stories and tips. And, and it took us probably about nine months after that to put the book together. And we really enjoyed the whole journey. So neat. And, and all the points you were talking about doing a side hustle. Yeah. So you said that so eloquently, but I was thinking that's true. That's true because <clears throat> Laura and I do have to manage our time. We still have full-time jobs and we have families. And so we do have to manage our time and, and uh, 
we, we love our jobs that we have as school counselors. We, we don't want to give those up, but we feel like we have so much more to give. Yeah. And, and you know, that's a really great point, Kim. Um, you know, because th- that question comes up a lot, you know, how will my employer feel uh, about it? And two things come to mind. First of all, you know, what you do on your own time probably should not be any of their business anyway. Um, but uh, maybe it's counterintuitive. Uh, in fact, I saw a side hustling stat recently that about 75% employ- uh, percent of employers actually encourage side hustlers for that very reason. Uh, you and I, sounds like we've both been lucky to have employers that recognize that, that, uh, you know, that the side hustle doesn't take away from your productivity or time or effectiveness at your job. It only enhances it. And it makes for a happier employee. So true. More knowledgeable. And it makes, really, it makes the, for educators who are afraid to come out of the dark with this, it really makes you uh, more valuable. It should. It should make you more valuable to your school or your institution because you you know, you've got this, and that's we, Laura and I always say everybody's good at something. We're all, all of us differently gifted in areas. So what are the top, and Laura, I know I've taken the talking you stick. Did. I had oh. something to say. <laughs> hey, Here, just, take, take well, the before, stick. Before you go, Laura, one of the things I really, really need to make, uh, make sure we talk about too is that, and we, talk, we write about this in the book, you know, uh, having a side hustle also means that you got to practice shoring up your boundaries. And so, for example, uh, I'm very, uh, every year, and I, I write about this, and I even provide an example form. Every year, I do a conflict of interest, uh, you know, disclosure to my employer that says, here are the side hustle stuff that I'm doing, and I do this nights and weekends, and so it doesn't really, doesn't interfere with anything. But I'm also very careful about using resources. So uh, I don't do, you know, private stuff on my university laptop. I do it on my home computer, and just everything from materials to time uh, and to conflict of interest. So, for example, uh, here in Southwest Florida, uh, we serve five different districts, and my policy has been for for over two decades that anything in this area that I do is free. Um, The same stuff that I would do somewhere else uh, at a cost is free here because I I just, it helps me sleep better at night, and uh, it helps me uh, serve the university. I mean, that's a university thing. And even if I go beyond, I just think as a boundary issue, as a conflict of interest issue, it's just a good policy to have. So good. I know you're not as old as me, Laura, so you don't have to say that. But <laughs> for the younger generation, it is just what they do now. And so um, it, we know that so many of the jobs are going to, that are, that our students that we're teaching, they're going to be self-employed. We know that. And they're, they're solving a need that they see. And we, we teach those skills to our students. So I think for these generations coming up, they may, they may be working from home and they may also have this job that they're doing as a side hustle that they're good at tech or they're good at, may not even have a degree in that. So I think we're seeing more and more of that. I think it's harder when it's not the way you kind of grew up, like you do your job and you do your job only. So I think it's that mindset, but um, I think it's just the wave of the future. We see, we know it is for a lot of folks, but I'm so glad you're addressing specifically with school counselors. Yeah, no, you're right. As I look at uh, the iGens and some of the younger folks, uh, this is not a big deal. This is what they do. In fact, we got uh, not talking school counseling now, but we got uh, some of the younger folks who this is what they do. They have two or three side hustles and that's their main income. And what's really neat is you're right there. You know, technology has afforded us so many ways now to be able to produce and reach out. And, and uh, whereas before only large, big budget companies could do this stuff, now anybody can do it. And so the tools have really kind of equalize the playing field. So true. So tell us, tell us a little bit about how your book is divided up. And, and when you were doing your research for the book, what are some of the common themes that you saw? And let's, let's dive into that. Yeah, you know, uh, like everything I do, I, I live by the three E's. So uh, by reading this book, it should make you more effective, efficient, and make your life more enjoyable. Um, and, and, we didn't really have a, a, a real outline to begin with because we didn't really weren't sure what other people were doing. 
Um, but as we interview dozens of school counseling side hustlers, uh, we did come up with the big seven, seven different themes. And so in school counseling, uh, what we found was that there are a lot of school counselors who are developing some amazing resources, uh, uh, tools, um, worksheets, curriculum, PowerPoints. So all of that stuff that, it, that really takes a lot of time. So it's not that you can't do it for yourself, but it saves you days of time. And so those were several themes, creating resources, creating tools, creating curriculum. And they're everywhere. They're on Amazon. They're on Teachers Pay Teachers. They're on their own websites. Uh, some school counselors uh, were really creating swag, uh, you know, stuff we all love, jewelry and shirts and caps and uh, some wonderful stuff. Um, and again, it's not that you can't do it. I could go over to a cafe or whatever and put it together myself, but it just takes time and I don't really want to have to do that. Uh, we've got some counselors who are in private practice. They have gotten their license in mental health, and so they're school counselors by day, and they're in private practice nights and weekends, and, and they thoroughly enjoy it. Again, they, they reap the benefits of all of that uh, in sharpening their own skills. We've got some who uh, went into teaching. So uh, some who've got doctorates are actually eligible to teach core courses uh, even in a KCREP accredited program. For those who have master's degrees, um, they end up oftentimes uh, able to kind of co-teach with a faculty member or supervise internships, which we love uh, because uh, that we know that gives us confidence in the next generation of school counselors. Um, so they're kind of adjuncting and, and working with faculty. And, and by the way, that sometimes leads to other collaborations that they would not have done if it were not for their side hustle. Uh, so those were kind of the major themes, uh, but also uh, we have a whole few pages, or maybe even a whole chapter, on just the myriad of all the different, maybe even non-counseling related side hustles. Uh, from Even now, we've got some very successful side hustlers, school counselors, uh, selling CBD and that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, they're, they're happy doing all kinds of, so we, we have a whole list, I think it runs a few pages. Uh, and by the way, I've kind of been monitoring that on some of the Facebook groups, and, and it's still happening as I monitor the school counseling Facebook groups. Almost, I would say, once every two weeks, there's a counselor who says, you know, hey, I'm trying to supplement my income and any ideas. And there's this flourish of all these wonderful. We've got school counselors who, using their own technology, are travel agents, and they get free travel from that. And so, and by the way, that's probably one of the other perks that we had, had not really mentioned before uh, is uh, in doing some of this, sometimes you get free stuff. Um, and what's amazing is that the, the tax breaks that come from stuff that you're going to do anyway. So, I mean, you got to talk to your accountant. I'm not an accountant. So, uh, but things like Netflix, I mean, that, that could be part of your keeping up with what kids are watching or your phone your smartphone or just, you know, stuff that you, you know, materials that you use, all of that can be now become tax deductible. So it really is a win, win, win. I had never thought about some of these things. Like, I mean, I didn't think about writing Netflix off on my taxes. And since you sit and watch them day and night, I think that was, <laughs> I don't know. Wow. That is really a great tip. Yes. And, um, yeah, it is. And, and it is interesting when you talk to an accountant, what all, if you do a business and, and um, an LLC or whatever, and talk to a good accountant about everything that um, you can and cannot, as we've learned, some things you cannot, but some things you can. And then you forget, like Laura and I might go eat and she'll say, keep your receipt. And, and all that's in the book to help us, to remind us and guide us. Uh, on some things that we may not think of. Yeah, and it's and one of the other things we write about in the book. In fact, I tell my story about when I when I uh, set up my LLC and it's a limited liability company, and I think I file as an S corp, whatever that means. You know, work with your accountant. But um, uh, it was really the data boot camp. I, I can still remember very vividly, and I write about this in the book uh, where. Um, I was uh, I was doing these data boot camp workshops for school counselors, and I couldn't keep up with the demand. I was not able to do at least half of all the requests that I was getting. So I said, I actually went over to the small business development center at my university, and I said, what do I do? I don't even know what to do. 
And I remember the person I was talking to said two words, uh, replicate yourself. And I thought, wow, what is that? Oh, okay. So uh, back then uh, the internet wasn't as robust. So I, I went over to CDs and I had this recurring nightmare that I was going to put together this CD and counselors were going to plug it into their computers and it was going to wipe out their computers. And, and, it was, <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I felt that liability. I thought, oh my gosh. And it was really out of time. Normally I wouldn't have cared because I sue me. I didn't have any assets, <laughs> <laughs> but it was at a point in time where it was a perfect storm. You know, I had this new product out. Uh, there was some liability there and I actually had a couple of assets that I wanted to protect. So um, I said, all right, let me look into this. I set up, you know, and it was really just for that. I had no idea about all this other stuff. It was really just to protect. Yeah. And, and, then, and then that just really got the ball rolling uh, with everything else. And so in the book, we talk about doing that. How to, how to, and it's really actually not that hard. You can almost do the whole thing online by yourself. That's awesome. It's just thinking differently to make it, to put it out there for more people. How about outsourcing? Is that something that you see a lot of folks getting, because it, you do have to, there's only so much time in a day. So talk to us a little bit about maybe how you've seen that with counselors. Yeah, that's a really good one. You know, uh, uh, different side hustles have different startups, uh, costs and that kind of thing. It doesn't have to cost very much. I mean, just for two to $400 after you set up your LLC, you could, uh, you can get, get started. And some of that is really just purchasing a little software to kind of help you uh, do some stuff. But um, I think for outsourcing, it, there's really two reasons why people do it. And we do write about that in the book, Stephanie and I do. Uh, one is time, you know, rather than sitting down for two or three days to figure something out or do something, um, you know, for maybe a couple hundred bucks, I can outsource it. And in that time that I would have used, I could do something else that might bring in a couple hundred bucks. So that's, it really is a time saver, but even I think more importantly is professionalism. You know, I'm not, I'm not a, uh, I'm pretty good at web design, but I'm not a professional. I'm pretty good at desktop publishing, but I'm not a pro. Uh, I'm pretty good at editing, but I'm not a professional. So uh, I think uh, if, if you, know, you want to make all of your products and services professional. Um, so even now that I'm self-publishing and you know, I hire a professional editor. That's my biggest cost uh, is to have somebody sit down line by line and make sure I got it right. Uh, so time saving and also professionalism. Things should not really look homemade. Very good point. Laura, <laughs> Laura. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard for us who are making our products to turn those babies loose, but you really have to think of it as time, right? And time is money. And what, what can I do that kind of is over and then have other people put them what they enjoy doing? Like you were saying, you may not enjoy um, web design, but somebody else can and, and do that. And there's so many opportunities for these outsourcing now from all over the world, really. It's amazing. Yeah, it really is. Um, and I'm trying, as I'm sitting here talking, I'm trying to think of the website I go to most often and I'm, I'm drawing a blank. I'll have to come back to that. But uh, it used to be called Elance and it moved over to something else. But um, uh, it's amazing. I mean, you, you, you go in, you describe your project, uh, you describe your budget, and then you get all of these people. It's kind of a request for proposals. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they, they give you bids and, uh, you know, you can actually look at their track record, how happy others have been with them. And I mean, there's the irony again, I'm, I'm hiring side hustlers to help with my side hustle. And, um, and in fact, terrible. that yeah. in itself is a side hustle. I mean, you could go to these consultants, uh, freelance kinds of uh, websites and er everything from building PowerPoints to coding to editing. There's just uh, people out there who are doing great jobs and they're professionals. They do this for a living. Please. Upwork, okay. upwork.com. Upwork. Upwork. I'm so glad that you took the time because I have not heard of that. Yeah. Oh, or that's my go-to, Upwork. Okay, very -E good. P-W-O-R-K.com, I think it is, Upwork. And, you know, people are fast. I'm amazed, uh, whether it's designing a book cover or uh, one, of my, one of my favorite stories, I think I wrote it in the book, is that, that Tears app that I did for Excel that helps you with time and task analysis. Um, 
I literally on on Upwork, I think I paid fifty dollars for that, and it was done in twenty four hours. What? Yeah. How exciting! You are just you're just making my wheels turn. And you know what he does? He's so humble because I he's know. Like, well, when I was doing that boot camp, and when I when I had this app, and I'm like, what? Like, there's so much that you do. Tell us about this app. Well, I, um, I haven't updated it in a while, but it, it still works. Uh, I call it Tears. I think it's uh, uh, time a lot. What is it? Uh, see, now I'm forgetting the acronym. But uh, what, I, what I was looking at was uh, how school counselors were doing time task analyses. Um, and you know that's an important part. Where does our time go? Is it direct, indirect? And all of this other software came out. There's like great four or five or six. ASCA has a great Excel spreadsheet you can use. But at the time, um, I was sensitive to how school counselors uh, had to learn a whole new program. You know, so the question for me is, can we somehow get this done using what school counselors are already using? And so uh, at the time, uh, this was before, you know, Google Calendar and that kind of stuff. But uh, at the time, I thought, so I started looking at Outlook. And uh, what I discovered, and I still remember this day because I did it and I thought, oh my gosh, you know, the, the, the heavens opened up. I thought it's possible. We can do this. So I discovered that if you categorize your appointments in the Outlook calendar, uh, you can actually export that calendar into a spreadsheet. <clears throat> and um, so I went on the road with this. And uh, however, as I started teaching counselors how to then do the next steps, which was to insert a column and do a quick calculation of elapsed time and then hit another button and do a chart. And, you know, they started glazing over and I thought, <laughs> oh, this is not good. So I said that we have to have an app for this. So I, uh, I looked into getting an Excel add-in done. That's, and that's what it is. So you, you export your calendar to Excel and then you click on a button and it breaks it all down for you. Why does this make me want to cry a little bit? Because you worked on something like this yourself. He's like, did. there's got to be a better way. I can do an app. I can, And you worked on it. And then I think. I didn't do an app, though. I tried to write all these formulas into Excel so that it would automatically calculate if this, then this type thing. And, you know, I, I did spend a lot of tears trying to and do that. So that's why you want to cry, because it's called tears. That's why it was called tears. Well, it is. And that's the joke. I call it tears, because when you get the results, you'll, you'll definitely you have either tears of joy or tears of sadness. I don't know. Is it time elapsed uh, analysis? I forget. Reporting system, yeah. something like yeah. that. Yeah. That but sounds you know, like that. That, that brings up a really another uh, very, very critical point in doing a side hustle. You know, just because you think uh, something is valuable doesn't mean that the profession does. And so the most successful side hustlers really have their ear to the ground. Um, I spend lots of time talking to school counselors, monitoring Facebook groups, just to see what their pain points are. And then really trying to solve those pain points. Again, how can we get you to be more effective, efficient, and enjoy your jobs more? And so it's not about you. Uh, it's not about you. It's about really serving uh, and fulfilling a need. It's getting rid of pain points. And that's so, that's so fulfilling mm -hmm. uh, to be able to do that because we're geared to help others. And um, you want, we were talking to Carol Miller yesterday, who's a great counselor, and she was talking about collaborating and helping and building each other up. And I think, but that leads me to another point. Um, I think a lot of counselors have trouble putting a monetary value on it's like, it's not, and we had trouble with that too, honestly. It's like. Because our nature is to help. It. That's why yeah. we're in the job. Counselor. So can you talk to us a little bit yeah. about maybe getting over that? Yeah, you know, that's, and that's probably, as I'm talking to you, I, you gave me an idea. I need to do a FAQ about side hustling. Frequently asked questions and answers. That's a big one. I get that question all the time. How much do I charge? And, and for school counselors, and for me, uh, you know, for a long time, it was nerve wracking because, uh, you know, these are the kinds of things we're used to giving away. And, and to, you know, do we, do we want to put a price on helping others? And so um, one of the ways I got over that 
is the 80-20 rule. So uh, 80% of everything I do, I give away. It's kind of like tithing. So 20% is what generates my income from my side hustles. And I think it's enough. I don't have to go beyond that. Um, so that's one thing, you know, a, a good side hustle will help you also give away and help even more uh, without a cost. Uh, but the second thing is, I think we do have to get over that, that what we do is valuable. Um, and people are, you know, even just the fact that you're saving time, but also getting resources that may, you may not even know how to develop, um, you know, that can be worth something. And, and you know, the, one of the uh, nice things about uh, some side hustles is that you don't have to break the bank for people. You know, you can charge two ninety nine dollars or something on, and, and that does add up. Um, but I, I think, you know, when you said we've got to get over it, I think that's, that, that's, that's what, you know, something we have to do is to be able to say, you know, my talents are worth something even beyond the classroom. Um, and so uh, now as far as, you know, what do I charge? That's really tough, you know, um, as you're just getting started. I, I, I tell a story in the book uh, about one of my first experiences. I was at the University of Louisville. I was a brand new, very young 29-year-old professor. And uh, I got a call on the phone to do a workshop that I'd been doing for a long time. And I was giving it away. It didn't even occur to me to, you know, to charge for it. And at the end of the conversation, the person said, you know, well, what is your fee? And that was kind of, I think, one of the first times I heard that. I thought, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> so I thought, you know, uh, this is going to probably take me a couple of hours. And, you know, so at the time, you know, a hundred dollars sounds good. <laughs> and uh, I had a colleague at the time who found out about it and really got upset and said, you're now undercutting all of us. <laughs> oh, wow. So uh, I said, and it was, you know, he, he had a chat with me. He goes, what are you doing? And I said, well, you know, $50 an hour, that's a lot of money. And he looked at me, he goes, he goes, how long did it take for you to get to this point where you could do that? And, and, at the point at which other people from not even in this area are calling you to do that. I mean, there's a reason why they're doing that. They don't, they can't find someone as high quality. Um, and so you're the person and, and it's not two hours. How many hours did it take you to get to this point? I said, well, hundreds. And yeah. I said, there you go. So, you know, uh, one of the pieces of advice in the book is definitely don't sell yourself short. You're not charging for two hours. You're charging for, a body of expertise that took you hundreds of hours to develop. And so, you know, um, maybe, um, I mean, I don't know, there's no going rate for stuff. I mean, just got to kind of feel the market out. Um, when it comes to speaking, you know, I think as you're just getting started, uh, maybe a couple, $300 an hour, somewhere in there. Um, and then of course it goes up as you're, you know, it's all supply and demand. So if you have very high demand and low supply, then you can go a little further. And, and I want to share this story. I've shared this with Laura before, and I think you'll appreciate this. Uh, <clears throat> my husband recently bought some land and on that land was a trailer that had to be pulled off just an old dilapidated. So we put out on social media, free trailer. And no, it, it, come and get it. And no one took him up on it. So he went back and he put old trailer, dilapidated, horrible condition, $3,000 that day. And, and he did not charge the person that much. But once he put a price on it, we were getting calls on it. And so sometimes the value is when you put a value, it makes it valuable. That's a great point. And I, and by the way, you know, I, I experienced that here sometimes even in my own area, it's hard. To, I can't even give it away. Um, so that's a really good point. Um, you know, they're going to pay somebody, they might as well pay you. Now, having said that, you know, I, I, I work with districts. So if you're a, you know, small rural district, you're, you're going to get a big break. Um, sometimes, uh, especially as you build your side hustle and you have a menu of products and services, you'll say, all right, you want this. How about if I throw in all of this other stuff? It doesn't cost me anymore, but you're going to get, you know, three times the value. And so, so as you do this, you know, you, uh, you, you try to make everybody happy. Uh, and again, you know, we're not trying to, um, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to get rich. I just want to serve people and, you know, make my time valuable. 
I had a, I worked in a sales position one time or for a while. And I would always say, I would always try to go as low as I could on the price. Cause I'm, I would just be like, Oh, you know, it's a school and they don't have money and everything. And my print, uh, my supervisor told me, she said, Laura, don't spend other people's money for them. She said, you don't know what they have and what they're willing to do for the service. And so I've always remembered that. And now that's one of my mottos for everything. Don't spend other people's money for them, not just with, I don't know, just all, in general. You yeah. use that in counseling. I if have. It's not even about money. You'll not say don't spend other money. people's money because right. you can use that for. Right. I know you just gave uh, Dr. Sabella a nugget. I know that you just gave him a nugget. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, you know, I always thought don't, don't write checks you can't cash. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we're going to do Southern sayings. I've got a bunch. <laughs> Don't count oh, your chickens before yeah. they have. You know, one of the things that a lot of beginning side hustlers uh, really feel bad about is they got all this wonderful stuff and they may put up a web page and then they wait for the phone to ring and it doesn't ring. And they go, hmm, you know, and it, uh, it's not the confidence builder that they'd hoped for. Um, and when I, when I tell them that nobody gets to do that, uh, I don't get to do that. You probably don't either. Uh, you do have to promote what it is you're doing. And I don't really like to say promote yourself. I mean, that's part of it. But um, if you let others know the value, um, you know, it, it's, it, it's oftentimes people don't figure that out until you show them. And so we're now in an age where we can do great videos and, and, quickly put up a, a blog or, or a social networking post. And you really do have to promote what you do and why it is that you do it as well as what benefits it has for others. Um, and what I found too, is you don't get to just do that once that people are distracted. And so uh, in the book, we have a whole section on promoting just to have everything from email campaigns to social networking, to developing brochures. And, and you do have to do that. Yeah, it's I mean, a lot. we still see McDonald's commercials. We know McDonald's, but we have to keep being reminded every day, every day that you know they're still there. Yeah, that's a really good point, Dr. Sevilla. Thank you so much. Now we're going to be in Vegas, and we will act like we're we know you probably better than we do. <laughs> so don't be embarrassed about our southern. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Well, I uh, really, really uh, am so excited about that. And that's really, one, you know, not just for the professional development, but to see you guys and see other school counselors finally again face-to-face, -face, uh, it's just so exciting. We can't not wait. Was there anything else that's in the works that we need to be looking forward in the future? We know that you are working on the edition five of this textbook. Six. And, six. Uh, six. Yeah, Is it yeah. six? Sixth wow. edition, yeah. You go to a real school counseling school. And <laughs> oh, I appreciate <laughs> you not mocking my education. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's going to be uh, taking up the, probably the rest of my time for the next few months for sure. Yeah. I bet. That is an undertaking for sure. Time. Time. It is just, there's not ever enough of it, especially if you have a mind like Dr. Sabella. I'm sure it's always his <laughs> ideas. And my mind, even though not near the level, but it's always going and there's just not enough time. But this book will help save time if you are interested in a side hustle. So we're going to link all the wonderful things that you need to uh, know more about Dr. Sabella and his other works, which are wonderful. And so excited about really um, updating my program. And this is my wow. and big actually update. That was another thing I just finished uh, in the last few weeks. I put together a quiz item bank. There's like a couple hundred items. So for those uh, using that book uh, as part of your course, I now have a, a quiz item bank. Um, as far as the side hustle goes, of course, everything is at my website, schoolcounselor.com. But if you go to schoolcounselor.com slash side hustle, um, there's some handouts. There's some excerpts from the book. Uh, we also have a link there to our Facebook group, which is growing. Uh, and that Facebook group is really designed to help each other out uh, with developing our side hustles. Excellent. And I was holding up the solution focused school counseling, the missing manual. And so we've got another component to that, a checkbox, you said. So I will we'll be checking that out. And uh, that's my big update for my program. And I know we encourage all counselors to keep updating and stay current. And uh, 
So we appreciate all that you do and all that you're going to do. Thank you for, on behalf of all other school counselors for what you do for our profession. We absolutely love you and we appreciate everything that you do for us. Well, thank you so much. I, I appreciate you guys. And uh, uh, so it's such a privilege to talk with you guys and really a privilege to be part of this profession. I mean, there's no other. There really is no other. So thank you guys for what you do. Thank, thank you. you. We don't have a story for you this week, but I am going to let you listen in on a conversation that we had before we really started recording. So enjoy this. And I'm sorry if you get secondhand embarrassment listening to Kim and me. If I slink up and go, hey, friend, are you going to go, who are the <laughs> Well, I think oh. probably most of our guests have a number of restraining orders against us, and we will find out about it. I will have my book going, please sign my book. Absolutely not. If, um, it's going to be hard not to give you a hug. I don't know how that's going to work. but I, really I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll have my mask and, and whole uh, beekeeper we'll, outfit we'll to get a hug yeah. from Russell. <laughs> we'll do a side hug with masks on. How about that? There we That'll go. Work. That feels awesome. <laughs> We're, we're huggers. Here. We're huggers. Yeah, are, you, um, are you just finishing with the, the school year under this full moon? Today this is the, the last day. day. Yeah. And, and that's so funny that you said the full moon thing. Has it been a full moon? Uh, Kim, oh my goodness. Yes. Like, did you take off this week or something? No, but listen to me, guys. Listen to me. I don't know why I said guys like we're from up north. We're all southern. <laughs> listen to me, y'all. The birds <laughs> sang all night long at my window all night long like it was the middle of the day and i should have guessed by that that there was a full moon yeah. i don't know i feel like i dropped a bomb and i'm getting nothing from you too <laughs> the birds were singing all night long okay oh. well i get it in perspective to this last year the birds singing all night long is not a big deal but I didn't know why they were singing so loudly all night. Now I know. Now you know. Oh, my goodness. You're already embarrassing me. <laughs> you too. So, let's get going. And, Laura, I will let you start because you have to. It's just the way you are. I have to be okay. first. But remember, the first will be last. But go okay. ahead. <laughs> Biblically, the first will be last. But you go ahead. 